Yo, what is up guys? Chase Oliver 68 here bringing you my Elimination Chamber 2012 review. Before I continue, check out Dashing Diggity. I plugged him in my Q&A. Forgot to link his channel. My bad Dashing Diggity. Hope you're still a big fan of mine. Keep up your show. Keep up the good work. Just go into the description box. Quickly subscribe to him. So let's get started with the Elimination Chamber. Elimination Chamber was live in Milwaukee. Little Chris, not Green Bay. Little Chris was convinced that there's no such thing as a Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and he believes that the only state in the only city in Wisconsin, I'm excuse me, is Green Bay. I have to tell him otherwise, but uh, I'm just explaining, dude. Can you just shut up, dude? He he's very emotional, and he's not happy I'm wearing this shirt right now. Let's just say that. But we got the Raw Elimination Chamber, which featured the best in the world, CM Punkers, the best in the world, what he does. Chris Jericho, boom boom, Kofi Kingston, my boy, Atruth, The Miz, and the show off Dolph Ziggler. I really did like this match. I thought it was a very good opener, and I and I thought it was better than chamber matches in the past two years. I thought this was a very good chamber. The only thing I did not like about this chamber was the people who got eliminated. Now, does this bump down the grades of a match? Um, not really to me. I thought it was a very good, well-executed match. But the only thing I didn't like is... Our troop He gets eliminated first. And Miz is technically the last guy eliminated. What? Our troop This whole week's leading up to Elimination Chamber... Was being built up... Like a, a stud. I'm not gonna lie. He's being built up like a stud. And they even made an article and whatnot on WWE.com like... Oh yeah, even though he fell and did a crazy flip, our troop seems like an unpredictable force in that Elimination Chamber match. He didn't look like anything like that. He just looked kind of like how he normally does. Ziggler lasted longer than him, and Ziggler has not looked strong at all weeks coming up to Elimination Chamber. And the Miz going in last, when there was apparently backstage heat and all this shit, it just really did not seem right. And Colby Kingston, I'm sorry. I understand they want to get more heat on Jericho, which which makes sense. They want to get more heat on Jericho. But why couldn't he have eliminated the Miz at least? But then again, you don't want to end your chamber like the way they fucking it, what happened to Jericho. You guys don't know what happened to Jericho. Tape Abe concussion where Jericho doesn't have to get pinned by Punk. And so that way they can have their match at Mania. But my only problem is this. Jericho came back and this whole end of the world, you know it shit, all this other stuff. He is supposed to be better than CM Punk. Better than the best in the world right now in professional wrestling, apparently by most standards. Why have him not win the WWE title? I'm, I'm fine with Punk keeping the title. I'm, I'm sick of the title flip-flopping. But why not have him win the title to actually show and establish that this guy is for real and he may be better than CM Punk. Why have Jericho chase Punk? Why not Punk chase Jericho? I don't know. It just throws me off and... What is it, little Chris? Is it because I'm wearing a CM Punk shirt and you eliminated our boy R-Truth? Now, little Chris. I love R-Truth. I like wearing a wrestling shirt during these pay-per-views to show that I am a wrestling fan. I do own some merchandise, even though if it's new. WWEShop.com I'm hearing you out and little Chris don't no, little Chris what are you doing? Oh little Chris oh fuck little Chris What are you doing man? Hey man get your hands off me I'm little Chris Fuck man do shit uh, Asshole Hey what are you doing with my shirt? Little Chris what are you doing with my shirt? Oh man don't throw my shirt like that Oh man dude Asshole. <sighs> Man, dude, you fucking pack a punch. <sighs> Dick. <sighs> fucking little Chris. <sighs> okay, I know you're pissed. Little Chris, I understand wearing a CM Punk shirt was not the right thing to do. I just want to know if we can apologize and move on to the remaining segments of the show. Do you agree? Hug. Love you too, buddy. Oh, fuck, man. 
Little Chris sure knows how to kick some fucking ass. But anyways, besides that um, whole thing with Little Chris and me fighting, we go on to the next segment. Fuck, man. Which was um, Santino preparing for the Elimination Chamber. And I'm going to kind of talk about my thoughts on the whole Santino theme uh, when the Elimination Chamber match for SmackDown actually happens. Divas title match. A very good in-ring match, I believe. I was just not that interested in it, nor really cared too much about it. Uh, Tamina wins. I uh, Not Tamina wins. Beth wins. Sorry, brain fart. I mean, little Chris just kicked my ass through my fucking CM Punk shirt. Hopefully he didn't rip it, but whatever. You know, he Seriously, that kid packs a punch, man. You don't want to mess with fucking little Chris. He can kick your ass. Trust me, I just got my ass kicked. But besides that, you know. It was a nice little in-ring match. It was just not that interesting to me. I'm sorry. I'm going to be honest here. Please give us Karma WWE and Beth Phoenix at WrestleMania 28. I know I'm sounding like an internet smart here, but whatever. Maybe because I am. Next up, we got the SmackDown Elimination Chamber match. In-ring wise, this was not as good as the Raw Chamber. But was it better than Chambers in the past? Like in the past couple years? I think it was. Um, I really liked how they used Big Show in this match. And Santino Morello. Oh my god. Seriously. I I'm probably going to get shit for this. But frankly, I don't really give a damn. The whole night they were using Eugene's old theme music. Building Santino up. Um. Mimicking little rocky segments, you know, that type of deal. And the whole night, the crowd was so behind Santino. They were in love with Santino Morel. It was crazy. And I was like, man, dude. Watching Santino trying to win the world title, and I thought he might might have won the world title. And I wouldn't have been pissed. Why? It made me feel like a little kid again. It really did. It made me feel like a little kid turn on like those underdog characters it was like man I could really get behind this shit so I personally liked it I didn't really mind it that much it was a good chamber match Big Show fucking fuck shit up in there I thought Big Show did an awesome job they did a really good job making Big Show look dominant in this match I mean two guys have to try to take Big Show out Big Show freaking destroying that chamber to get to Daniel Bryan that's how you book a really good big man like a big show in these chamber matches like doesn't deal with Kali shit takes him out like Deb destroys the cage because he wants to get to Daniel Bryan very good shit Daniel Bryan ends up winning tapping out uh, Santino there's that glimmer of hope that Santino was going to escape he didn't and then out comes Sheamus Sheamus comes out pissed off at what Daniel Bryan did to him on Smackdown laid him out and looks like we might be getting Daniel Bryan versus Sheamus. Where are my thoughts on about that? Many of you guys want to know? I'll give you guys my thoughts later on in the week. I'll probably post a video of my thoughts on the possible Daniel Bryan and Sheamus match that is going to happen at WrestleMania. Frankly, I do not think it will just be a singles match. Because my boy, I hear voices in my head. Randy Orton is going to win that title on Tuesday, fellas. I know it. I feel it. I feel it, and I'm going to believe in it. But besides Randy Orton being awesome, we got a stupid segment with Natalia farting. Fuck off with that, seriously. One of your top three workers as a female in the WWE, maybe top four, and she's being reduced to making fart noises. That's just pathetic. It's pathetic. But it leads up to Justin Gabriel versus Jack Swagger in the United States title match. Oh, God. Why? Jack Swagger has not been featured on TV at all. Justin Gabriel on SmackDown has been with Cody Rhodes. You would think, huh, wouldn't Justin Gabriel have a icy title match against Cody Rhodes if Cody Rhodes wasn't in the chamber? Yeah, I would think that too, but instead, they have a U.S. title match, uh, a nice little match, but I really didn't care for it that much, and Jack Swagger wins, so that's how it goes. Swagger wins. And now we get on to the main event. And I understand where some people are going to say, 
This should have not ended the show. It should have been a world title match because your world title is supposed to be your big draw. I understand where people are saying you kind of need Cena to main event because he's facing the Rock at WrestleMania. Both sides have a right argument into it. Cena versus Kane. An okay brawl. And very okay brawl. I did enjoy this match. Uh, just not like the best like Cena and, and Kane brawl I was expecting it. There were some cool spots in it. Cena embracing the hate, I guess. Um, I guess that he's overcome it. Because he rides above it and you could tell because he was pointing at the WrestleMania sign. So, yep. Cena wins this match. Now, I know you guys are saying, Chase, you skipped over one segment. Oh, no. This was my fucking main event for this show. This, by far, was the, one of my favorite segments I've seen in a while. Next to an R-Truth segment, I know. Johnny Ace, Lord Ninus, for SmackDown and Raw GM. I want Johnny Ace to be that. And you know what? I love this segment with a burning passion. Oh, my God. I'm saving this for last. Because I was so exuberant about this segment. I loved it. First, you had Johnny Ace come out and say that he's going to become the Raw and SmackDown GM. And then Abuto Del Rio makes his return. And Del Rio basically says Teddy Long screwed him when he was on SmackDown. And it's true because like, Abuto Del Rio really didn't get a good fair chance at that world title. He said when Edge retired, it was pretty much a match that he was not capable of really competing in. I like that. And then Mark Henry. I thought Mark Henry was fucking golden. Tonight, golden. She's saying, That is wrong, harass me. <laughs> he made me get all pissed off and touch him. That was awesome, dude. He was just like acting like he was the victim when Mark Henry's been beating up motherfuckers since June on SmackDown. I thought that was awesome. And then the return. And he is one of my favorite wrestlers. Um, I've always loved this superstar, Christian. I know my boy Orton and my boy Christian had a feud. But Christian is definitely one of my favorite talents in the WWE for a long time. And I would even say I like Christian a little bit better than Edge. I know I'm going to get shot for that by most of you Edge fans. But it's my personal preference. You have Edge. Christian's more my flavor. Edge is more your flavor. Everyone has a preference here in the YWC, okay? Oh my god. Uh, Christian coming out. And then, <laughs> he never gave me one more match. <laughs> and then they were going to go take the picture. David O'Tunga didn't know how to work out. I just love everything about this segment, dude. I thought this was an awesome segment. And I just wanted to end it because... First off, it had Mr. Fun and Entertaining, John Laurinaitis, Johnny Hayes, David Otunga, Christian, good mic work. I really did love this segment, and that's why I want to end the show talking about it. Because really, this Chamber show, what, what are my overall thoughts of it? The Chamber matches were good themselves. I, I'm glad that they actually used the Chamber this time, like using the environment of the Chamber. Made it a very good match. Cena and Kane, like I said, was okay in my books. It's just two matches I didn't really care about. I thought the Chamber was a very solid show. I may be in the minority there, but I thought it was a very solid show. Definitely, uh, it was it a good show, though, to really make you say, man, I really want to see WrestleMania? I thought it did an okay job with that. I really did think it did do an okay job. Not like the most perfect job, but it did an okay job. So, to me, the Elimination Chamber gets a solid B. That's my grade for it. Johnny Ace for Raw and SmackDown GM. Asian Randy Orton, a.k.a. Chase Aller 68, a.k.a. with Little Chris, a.k.a. the greatest around for the presidency of the Randy Orton fan club of the YWC. Make sure you check out Dash and Diggity down below. You know what I'm saying. Follow me on Twitter. Add me on that Facebook. Not my real life Facebook. The Chase Oliver YouTube Facebook. Pretty much what I got to say there. This is Chase Oliver 68. And I say, see y'all.